Hi, I'm Greg the Janitor. You may recognize me from such training films as It's Microalgae, Don't Eat That, In the Plasma Incinerator, It's Hotter Than the Sun. This is a training video introductory level on lab coats. I know, a whole video on lab coats. There are lots of questions and it's an introduction level. You'll get training on your area's specific lab coats and requirements, but it's more geared towards visitors, vendors, and new employee orientation. So uh, at this point, I'm supposed to mention uh, copyright and user in part prohibited, blah, blah, blah. But who are we kidding? I'm gonna put this on the internet. So. If this is being presented as official training for some other organization, you're stealing. Uh, if you want to license it or something, we could probably work something out. Uh, just let us know. Uh, again, for visitors, oh, safety point. I'm supposed to bring this up too. And like every organization, we have a safety program. Ours is the safety spear, because safety begins at the point of the spear. Apparently we can't go around poking each other with spears because, well, the court said so anyway. Uh, our safety point for today is self-rescue. It's the first and maybe only form of rescue available, so have a plan. Uh, so we're going to talk about lab coats, but before I do, I want to, I need to mention uh, lab robes. Uh, it's a lab coat, it's a lab robe. The lab robe uh, is not the same as a lab coat, which uh, you're not supposed to be working in these guys. Um, it looks like a bathrobe, but it's got the company name on it. And it's luminescent, so in the presence of darkness, you'll be able to see that. And if you're unconscious on the floor in the dark, we can see you. Uh, it, they're meant to just keep you warm. Um, being this deep underground, you'll notice that, uh, notice or find that the office areas, which is where you're supposed to wear this, is a little on the cool side. And they're just meant to keep you warm and comfortable. If you're a visitor, um, dress warm. <laughs> and these are available in the gift shop if you want to get, they've got many different styles and stuff. So I know we all cut through some of the lab areas with their lab robes on and that's okay just be careful don't work in your lab robe i know you dress warm right uh you're supposed to be wearing your lab coat oh i'm also supposed to mention that uh, the gift shop told me the temporal lab coats they're out of so you'll have to check back at another time and place for those uh, and go online and, and see what's available in the different styles, but the, they're fun. So, uh, lab coats. This is just the basic lab coat, okay? There's a lot of different types and individual training available when you get to that level of access. So, think of a lab coat like a circle, right? It's got an inside and an outside. And for a circle to work, it's got to be closed. So does your lab coat. But first, there are some adjustments on all the basic lab coats. Um, again, if you're if you're in the electromagnetic, the EM lab, uh, you'll have the Faraday coat. If you're in the uh, temporal lab, you'll it'll be a full length, floor length, fully sequined reflective lab coat, and it won't have sleeves, but functions are still the same. All of them have an adjustment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so here in the back you'll see a tie, uh, back tie. So there's some adjustment. Your lab coat shouldn't be restrictive or uh, too baggy. Uh, so you can make some adjustment to it and, if, and we'll get you the right size. So uh, make, make the adjustment so it fits nice. And you'll also hear occasionally someone yell dingle wangle. I don't know why they're calling it that. So if someone yells dingle wangle dangle, don't let your dingle wangle dangle. Uh, you don't want to get this caught in a conveyor 
or have some biologic grab a hold of it uh, from one of the tanks and rip your coat off of you or drag you in or have some method for climbing out. So uh, make sure these are tied. And again, like circle, it's got to be closed. Now this is my uh, general access lab coat. So uh, every, uh, you'll, you'll see a bunch of different colors depending on the lab and the particular hazards involved in what you're working with. So all the lab coats are designed to show any contamination. And you're going to say that a lot of the liquids and powders we work with are clear. Yeah. You know, uh, and and there specifically when you're dealing with a lot of the clear, you'll have a color coded that'll show up. And you may see the safety team walk around with special flashlights and they'll shine the light on your lab coat and those contaminations will uh, phosphorus or luminous uh, so you gotta have your lab coat uh, closed in order for it to work and it keeps again contamination off so and it's, it's not gross contamination it's meant for incidental accidental uh, Contamination. These stay here in the lab. I'm responsible for cleaning them, and you know, if you're missing a button or whatever, I'll get a, uh, I'll replace the buttons. Let me know if something's wrong with your lab coat. They get checked every day, but sometimes I miss stuff. So let me know if something's wrong with your lab coat. One of the things you'll notice when you put on your lab coat is, you know, why are the sleeves so dang short? they're supposed to be. Uh, in addition to uh, showing us when we get contamination, it's we don't want these big long cuff, well, they don't have big long cuff sleeves because we don't want to drag our cuffs across our bench and spill stuff. <coughs> uh, and the other thing you'll know, or, well, you may not notice, the material, um, most of these are fire retardant, uh, they're not fireproof, and they're not contamination proof. So it's not a suit of armor uh, unless you're working in the incinerator room. And even then, fireproof, well, the outside won't burn, but the inside will. So you, if it's not a suit of armor. Um, Uh, we color other functions in the, in the colors. Oh, and last but not least, it, the big question is why do we wear them? Well, one, keep contamination off. We don't want to be dragging stuff, and that's why they stay in the lab. We don't want to drag contamination out to the general public or take them home and have something set up residence in your shower drain or something, putting your kids and your pets at risk. So they stay here, and if you're in those areas with materials that are really vicious, you'll have more than just a lap coat. You'll have a uniform, dedicated shoes, and that kind of stuff. We'll, that training's for, uh, for those specific areas. The one thing you don't notice, uh, why we wear them, is not just to keep contamination off of you, and just like a circle inside and out, it's keeping the inside in. So our clothing, and, you know, these aren't just fashion statement and you've seen them. they're not a fashion statement it keeps uh, fibers in our lunch that we've spilled on our clothes out of our lab work out of our experiments or whatever we're working on so it keeps the inside in keeps the outside out and it's just general uh, like I said accidental or incidental contamination. So, so if you're a visitor or whatever, that's why we wear them. If you're a new employee, that's why we wear them. And I hope to see you next time.